In Revit, it is possible to present your design options with complete annotation and documentation so that the customer can make an informed decision on which way to proceed. In part three of this series, we're going to explore the documentation process of design options as well as presentation techniques. So here I have my architectural file with the design options already set up with all the views that necessary for uh, presenting the information. And one thing that I didn't do uh, last time when I was working on my new option was go in and start tagging the plan. But when I started off by duplicating the original plan, I got a lot of the annotation from the original view that didn't uh, relate to the option itself. So a lot of that's taken care of. The only thing that's really left to do is maybe the door here and the rooms. So because this is an option and annotation is specific to the option that it's displaying, I can use my annotate tools to just go ahead and add room tags and door tags to the plan. So I'm going to select my room tag tool here, come in and tag the room in the option in, uh, enclosed and open offices here. I can also go and use my tag all not tag tool if I wanted to make it speedier, but I'm just going to grab my tag by category and tag this door here that's not tagged in this option. And once that's complete, I can do what I normally do, go in and relabel the room. So I can say these are enclosed offices. And I didn't want to open up the family, so I'll just go back and make sure that I pick the right thing here. So I'll open office, change the number. And because these are instances in an option, it won't realize that there's a duplicate 114 in the other option. And likewise with my doors, this will be door 114 here. And there you have it. So documenting, not a big deal in this case to uh, inform the owner or the customer of what's happening in this particular option. Now I can continue on doing this for all my views, but let's say I want to cut a section now through this view to kind of show the uh, owner what's going on or maybe get uh, numbers for pricing from the contractor. So using my section tool, I'm going to build a building section through this. So I'll just go through, let's say, the, uh, the window here, even through the doorway, so we can see a cut through the door. And when I go and look at the view, I can set its scale, I can annotate that as well. Uh, but there you have it, very simple to do. And you'll notice that now I have a section underneath. Now that section was actually cut in the option two view. But if I go open up the floor plan for option one, I see the section mark there for the second option, which is not really what I want. I want to show a dedicated section mark that points me to a section of this option. So tags have a unique property inside of the properties over here that lets you specify which option the tag refers to. So you'll notice that there's a parameter here called visible in option. And when I select that, I'm going to pick that this is the section mark for option two, which is the enclosed and open offices. And when I do that, you'll notice that the section tag disappears from the option one plan. But it's back here still in the option two floor plan. So what's nice about that now is I can create dedicated views for each option when it comes to tags that refer to those views. So now that I have a section tag through option one, let's make a section tag through option, or sorry, two, we'll make a section tag through option one. So I'll select the tag command again, and this time I'm gonna draw a section through the view uh, for option one. And likewise, I'm gonna set that parameter to be dedicated to that particular option, which is the uh, four enclosed offices. So all that it's gonna require is now renaming. So I'll call this phase two and we'll make it new as well because this is a phase project. We're going to call it building section and we're going to call it option two. And then this one will be renamed very similar, new phase two building section option one. And if I open it up there I can see the difference between the two sections that I've created for each option. So here's the section mark that's assigned to this particular view for option one, and here's the section mark that is dedicated to this section view for option two. 
So just keep track of those uh, particular tag elements to make sure that they're pointing to the right uh, options when you place them. Uh, another instance of that would probably be your interior elevation call out. So if you put an interior elevation call in there, make sure that it's appropriate. So another thing I might want to do is put camera views in here. So let's say we go create a camera view in, in, in the plan. So I'm going to make my option one floor plan active and I'm going to create a camera view in here. So I'll go and create a camera view that's looking down the hallway here to kind of show the owner what potentially the space would look like. And if I don't like the angle that the camera is at, I can go and open up the steering wheel here and begin to walk and maybe find the appropriate angle that I want. So maybe I want to look that way. And then uh, maybe I want to set the uh, view to uh, shaded or maybe realistic. Now just like any normal view, what I'll have to do here is set the visibility graphics to show that particular view. So what I want to do is come up here to visibility graphics, make sure that I'm dedicating this view to the primary option, and then labeling it as such. And then I can duplicate that. But this time, this is going to be dedicated to option two. And again, I'll just simply rename that. So very quickly, I can start building, building, and building presentation views for my owner to take a look at and see which way he wants to proceed with the design. Now another thing that you can look at is scheduling. So I'm going to build a schedule here of rooms. So let's go to the room schedule, pick the room category, and I'm going to call this room schedule option one. And we might as well say that it's part of the new construction phase, phase two. And when I hit OK, I can start picking my values. So I'll pick number, name, and area. Let's say sort by number, format the area to be right justified and calculated totals. And I might as well have a summation of the totals in my schedule. Now, just like any normal view, this is going to report the primary option. But you'll notice that I can go and pick the phase that it's assigned to. And then I can go to the visibility graphics button here for that schedule and say, nope, you're going to show phase one, which or option one, which is the primary option. Now, just like I do with any normal view, I'll go and duplicate it. And in this case, it's going to be option two. And the only thing I'm going to change is the option that it's relaying. And now I get a breakdown of space areas from one option to the other. And this could be very influential in the uh, owner's decision as to how much square footage or cost prefer per square foot his addition would cost. So as you can see, I'm qu very, very quickly amassing a lot of information regarding my design options. And now I need to present that detailed information. So let's go to the sheets. So I'm going to make a sheet here. And what's really valuable about the sheet is the way I can go about presenting it. So I can make a presentation title block. I'm just going to use the out of the box one for this case. And I'm going to drag my options on. So I'm going to go drag the first option for the plan here. Let's just say I place it up in the upper left corner. I'll go place the second one down here. I can go place some other information on there. Let's say we want to place the 3D views. So I'll do the cutaway. And as you can see, it's pretty large, so I might want to scale those down, maybe. So let's see what quarter inch will give me. So as I drag them on, they're not so large. Probably still too big. So maybe we go just a little bit smaller. Three sixteenths looks like it might work better. And then I'll place that up here in the upper right corner. Let's use my nudge command to get it into place. 
Uh, and then I'll drag the other one out, make sure that's at the same scale. Line it up for the right shot angle I want. And then maybe massage the uh, title marks around here a little bit. So bear with me as I move some things around. And then maybe finally I want to get the schedule detail information on there. So I'll drag that on there. And I'll look for an optimum spot for that stuff. So I'll just drag this one up here. Put that one in the upper corner. And I'll drag option two right next to it. And I'll try and line it up so I can get the columns the same size as best I can. And then I'll just drag it down a little bit. So very quickly, I can go and build sheets that show the detail information. Go make another sheet to put the sections on and the camera view. So maybe I want to go put the sections on this sheet. So I'll put option one here. I'll put option two here. And then I'll put my camera views on. And as you can see, my camera views might be uh, you know, the wrong proportion. So I might want to go and modify those. But I'll just drop them on the way they are. And very quickly, I can build sheets to present the information on. So those are just some techniques that you can leverage to uh, document and present your information. Remember, documentation elements are pretty much view specific, so you don't have to really worry about them encroaching on other views unless it's a section tag or elevation tag or some other call out tag for that matter, which you can dedicate to a particular option within your project. Now, after you've presented all your information, let's go make the sheet current here. So I just want to make SK1 the sheet I want to work with, and I'll close down the other views. So once you've presented the information to the owner and they want to go ahead, let's say, with option one, which was your original intent, uh, you can go now and purge the other options from the file. And to do that, we'll just return back to the Manage tab, select Design Options here, and we'll accept the primary. And once I do that, it'll say it's going to delete all the other stuff so let's just be careful with that it's going to tell me that it, it has to delete all these other things here and when I close you'll notice that the views on the sheet are gone and all the other views pertaining to option two are gone as well including the schedules 